So you want to do some face swapping with Flux in WebUI Forge. Well, Face Swap Lab is the extension you need. I'm just going to show you a really quick preview. You see that I have my photo here and my prompt is just for Clark Kent sitting on a bench with a Superman shirt under his dress shirt. And uh, if we take a look at the photo, you see my ugly mug on there. And as I mentioned, this works for Flux and you can utilize other models like SDXL if you wanted to. As always, I'm going to leave a link in the description below on everything you need particularly the link to install this. I definitely want to give a shout out to Ethereum John who posted this in a Reddit post. And basically what he did was he took the original face swap lab that wasn't compatible with WebUI Forge, created a fork and made it possible for us to use it. And when you start up Forge, you're going to get all these unexpected argument warnings. You can ignore them for now, but this is because of the Gradio update. I guess whatever he did, it was sort of a workaround for now. But once you get to this page, you want to click on this green button here that says code, and then it's going to give you the link here. Simply just have to copy this onto your clipboard. And then within Forge, you want to go to your extensions, click on install from URL, and then you're going to want to paste the link into this area here and simply click install. Go back to the install tab, click on apply and restart UI. Typically, I like to shut down and restart. The other thing you want to do ahead of time before you restart, if we go back to the main GitHub page, you want to scroll down a little bit. There's a couple links that you want to open up. This one is the regular documentation on how to use Face Swap Lab. And then as we scroll further down, there's a quick start guide here, which we're going to do. But if we scroll further down, there's going to be a list of upscalers that you want to click on. Simply right click, open that up, and then you'll come across this page. You want to open up this link to a database of all the upscalers that are available. And here you can find any upscaler that you want. I will link them directly for you, but in case you wanted to look for particular upscalers, you can find them here. Now going back to the upscaler page that we just looked at, they recommend using this one. You could simply right click and save link as, but I use a different one, which I'm going to show you in a bit. And you want to make sure that you save these files into your main web UI folder under models, under ESRGAN, save them into this file folder. This is the upscaler that I like to use. Ultra Sharp is also another one. And once you restart web UI Forge, you should see face swap lab at the top. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Here we go. And you should also see it amongst your settings here. And uh, we're going to use this one here. We'll click on the arrow to open up all the options that we have here. And there's a couple ways I'm going to show you how to approach this. I'm not going to cover everything, but I'm going to show you enough to get started. So first you want to drop your image in here, drag and drop or click on here. We're going to pick this image here of my ugly mug. <laughs> and you want to make sure enable is on blend faces, sort by size, same gender. So check all these boxes here and then go under global post processing. We're going to select code former and code former weight. I put it at 0.7 just because one seems to be heavy. Depending on your image and your picture, you may have to experiment with it. 0.7 for me works pretty well. Now you could technically leave the upscaler empty and it'll just run its default one, but I like to use this particular upscaler. It looks really natural and I get pretty good results with it. And that's pretty much it in terms of what you need to do with face swap labs. Now for this image, I'm actually using the eight step flux Laura, mainly because it gives it sort of a natural look compared to just running the regular dev model. And I've also set the distilled CFG to 2.5. I find between two to three gives you more of a natural look and it looks less plasticky that Flux tends to do. I did show you this one earlier, although the Adams apple looks extremely sharp. We could always in-paint that and correct it, but I'm going to run another one just to show you the results. Now currently it's running slow because I'm recording in the background, but what I wanted to show you, as you see here, it's first generating the initial image and then it's going to do the face swap last. There you go. Now it's finalizing. Now it's doing the face swap. 
And here's the image after the face swap. Now the second way we can approach this is a little bit more advanced, just a few more extra steps. So what we're gonna do is go back under global post processing, turn that off, click on none. Go back to face one, leave all the settings as is, but we wanna go under advanced options, under post processing and advanced mask options. Click on the arrow. We're gonna enable code former once again. Select your upscaler, set your weight. And now you'll notice here that you have a couple more options. So you wanna click on this one, use improve segmented mask. Basically it creates a mask for just the face. And then there's an option here to use color correction. Sometimes when you use the global settings, you may find that the skin textures can look a little bit off. So this will help with that. You could try sharpen face, especially for perspectives that are like half body or full body. I find it overdoes it though so I don't use it, but you can experiment and see which you like better. This you can leave to one, and then we're gonna go ahead and generate another image. All right, here's the finished image and definitely has my face if I were to be Clark Kent sitting on the park bench. And I did wanna point out the Reddit post where I found this. And basically the guy says he's not a developer. He just made it work for Forge. So if you're having issues with the original face swap lab repo, you'd have to go to the original GitHub page and go to their discussion page for support. Oh, and by the way, I just came across this post on GitHub about control net support. It looks like the developer is going to start working on it on the 29th and should finish around October 7th. So we're a few weeks out, but it looks like they'll be focusing on some flux control nets and some community implementations of union control nets, which is basically the all-in-one control nets, just like SDXL. So we're almost there and maybe even instant ID will be fixed up and you may not have to use FaceWap Labs after all but we'll have to wait and see. Now, if you're new to Flux and you're wondering about all the different file formats, make sure to check out this video here. Until that next one, I'll see you when I see you.